Hello everyone, in this video we'll be solving a floor equation. For those of you who are new to my channel, I made 12 videos before this one on floor, ceiling and fractional part equations. I think they're very interesting topics. I'll share the links down below. And let's get started. A lot of people are asking me where I find these problems. This one, this particular one, I wrote on my own. And it's not very hard to do if you understand the concepts. So. We have x to the power floor of x is equal to 37 and we're going to be looking for x values. So let's remember the definition of floor value again. So the floor value of a number is basically rounding that number down to the nearest integer. In other words, it's also called the greatest integer function, which means you're looking for the greatest integer that is less than or equal to x. So that's how we basically define the floor value, greatest integer less than or equal to x, meaning that it's not going to exceed the number, okay? A good example would be 3.14, which you can also replace with pi, obviously, would be a 3, but if you have something like a negative pi, this would be the negative 3.14, so we, we need to be careful about this, because you're always rounding it down, so the answer is going to be negative 4 in this case, not negative 3. Okay, so we have an exponential floor equation, which makes it exponentially more interesting, in my opinion. Please let me know what you think. But anyways, let's get started. So we have x to the power floor of x equals 37. Now, so what am I going to do? Well, guess and check is a problem solving strategy. Even you, you know, you may agree or not, but you sometimes have to just test some values. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and test some values here. For example, what happens if, uh, by the way, uh, if you think about this problem, can x be a negative number? For example, if x is a negative value, then you're going to have to raise negative value to a negative integer, and that will be like a fraction. So we're not going to have any negative solutions, obviously, so let's just test the non-negative solutions. Okay, so if x is between 0 and 1, then we get, what do we get? Okay, if you have a number that is between 0 and 1, but it could include 0, that means its floor value is going to be 0. So we have something like this, x to the power 0 equals 37. Obviously, I think we all know that 1 does not equal 37. So we don't get any solutions from this interval. So we're going to look at it on different intervals, okay? So if x is between 1 and 2, then I get the floor value of x is going to be 1. So x to the power 1 is going to be 37. I'm not going to repeat this every time. Hopefully, this will make sense. Obviously, x equals 37 is not going to work because it's not between 1 and 2. So we reject the solution and we're not going to take it. What if uh, x is between 2 and 3? Then we get something like x to the second power equals 37. And from here we get two values, but I'm just going to consider the positive value. Uh, so don't be mad at me if I don't talk about the negatives here because they're not needed. We get x equals neg uh, square root of negatives, um, square root of 37. I, I keep saying negative. So uh, obviously this number is not between 2 and 3 either because this number is square root of 37 is greater than 6 and less than 7, so it's going to be between 6 and 7. Okay? That doesn't work either. So let's go ahead and look at the next interval. I know you, you're probably already complaining like, oh, is this going to go on forever? No, it's not going to go on forever, so don't worry. I'm just going to give you a couple cases and then talk about the general situation. Okay? So if x is between 3 and 4, as you know, the floor value is going to be 3, and we're going to get this equation, and this implies that x is e equal to the cube root of 37. Okay, now let's think about it. Is x between 3 and 4? That's what we need to check, right? Because we made an assumption saying that, okay, let x be in this interval, and then is that going to work? So now you can easily check this because we know that x cubed is equal to 37. Let's go ahead and cube everything here. Then we're going to be getting something like this, x cubed between 27 and 64, which means that our solution is valid because we got 37, right, from x cubed. All right, so that means x equals cube root of 37 is a valid solution, so I'm going to take that. What about other intervals? Let's go ahead and take a look at the next interval. If x is between 4 and 5, its floor value is going to be 4 because it's 4 point something, and we're going to get x to the fourth power is 37. Notice that we have a constant on the right-hand side, so it's a little easier to solve and then we get the fourth root of 37. Again, I'm considering the positive solution here. Now, the fourth root of 37 is obviously less than, uh, what is the fourth root of the number that I'm looking at? Uh, 81, right? 
So it's less than the fourth root of 81, which means that x is actually less than 3, right? Well, our initial assumption was that x is between 4 and 5, so this is not going to work. Well, what happens if you continue this pattern? You're going to notice that we're not going to get any solutions from this point on, which means that this number is probably the only solution. But let's go ahead and take a look at it from a more general perspective. The reason why I didn't start with the general is because if I do the general case, then there's no meaning in doing the specific cases. And it's also a good introduction to people who are, who are new to floor. And I know that some people find it hard, but if, actually if you think about the definition of the floor function, it just returns an integer all the time. So you're basically looking at an integer, not just the... Um, not just a real number on an interval. So it kind of makes it a le little easier. And hopefully you got to look at the other videos that I did on floor, ceiling, and the fractional part because they're all related. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the general case. Okay, what happens in the general case and why we got this solution and if there are any other solutions. Okay, so in general, we can safely say that if the floor value of x is equal to n, where n is an integer, obviously, right? Because the floor value always returns an integer. This implies that x is between n and n plus 1. Of course, we have inclusion on one side, don't have it on the other. With the ceiling, roles are just reversed. So, if our floor value is equal to n, n being an integer, then we get something like this. x to the power n is equal to 37, which implies that x is equal to the nth root of 37. Again, n is a positive integer. I'm only considering the positive solution here. Okay, now let's go ahead and raise both sides here, or everything I should say, to the nth power. So we get something like n to the n less than or equal to x, and that's less than or equal to n plus 1 to the power n. And this is kind of like an interesting inequality because we're kind of talking about, you know, some type of growth here. You can talk, talk about the limit as an approach is infinity and, you know, so on and so forth. So there are some interesting results that arise from here, but we're not going to go into details because I want to keep this video short. So this is my inequality or chain of inequalities. Let's go ahead and replace uh, x to the nth. Oh, I forgot to raise this one. Uh, let's replace that with 37. So we're going to get something like this. Okay. Now. So I want my number 37 in the middle such that whatever the n is, because n is an integer obviously, right? Uh, my 37 needs to be in this interval. So for example, if n is equal to two, then I get two to the second and three to the second. Obviously 37 is not between four and nine, so this is not valid, make sense? Uh, well, if n is equal to three, it's not gonna work. But if n is, well, actually, did I say it's not going to work? It is actually going to work. If n is equal to 3, then you're going to get 3 to the third and 37 and 4 to the third. And obviously, 37 is between 27 and 64, as we discussed before. Therefore, n equals 3 is going to give us a solution. The reason why it doesn't give us solutions is because the n to the power n is going to grow real fast, and 37 is just going to be kicked out of that interval, and we have no longer solutions. Which means that, which means that the, the cube root of 37 is going to be, so our equation was, let me rewrite my equation, x to the power floor of x is equal to 37 has one solution, and that is equal to, that is equal to the cube root of 37. And this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Tomorrow, I'll see you with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.